So believe it or not, it's already been a month since OpenAI released their brand new image generation model. The same one that took over the internet with its anime filters and the ability to create AI generated images that could actually do text correctly. And while that model was absolutely awesome, the one thing it was missing was an API, something that would allow us to actually input it into our AI agents and automations. Well, luckily for us, OpenAI just released that image generation API yesterday. And so what you're looking at here right now is an automation that allows us to make posts to Twitter, LinkedIn, and our blogs with not just text, but with an image that actually goes along with it, thanks to that new image generation model. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through this automation. I'm gonna show you how it works, show you how you can customize it yourself, and also show you different places that you can improve on once you get in here and start working with it on your own. So first things first, let's look at some of the images and text it actually generated for me when I ran this automation. So here's an example of a LinkedIn post it's talking about LLMs and how they relate with entrepreneurs. And then it created based on that post, this image, right? Something to do with large language models and it gave it an anime filter. And then here we can see the same thing on Twitter, right? We have a tweet, it has some hashtags, those are an emoji. And then we have that same sort of image being produced for our post. So why do we care and how does this all work? Well, the reason we care is because up until now, it's been pretty difficult to generate images via prompt, via AI, inside of automations that can do text well, right? We've been kind of limited to a few different models that can create images that are even good at all, like mainly Midjourney or Flux. And you had to pay a lot of money to get stuff that really did the job and they couldn't include text, right? If you wanted really good text, you had to go out of your way after the fact and edit them. But now we have the ability to do text and we have the ability to do a wide range of images, right? We're not stuck with just photorealism. We can do all sorts of stuff. And so this really opens up our ability to market using AI and using visuals in a way we just couldn't do before. So that's why we care about this. Now, how does it work? Well, big picture, what happens in this automation is someone fills out a form that says, this is the topic I wanna to talk about. This is the target audience. This is the platform. And this is what I want the image to kind of look like. From there, it then goes into the text classifier, which decides, hey, are they talking about Twitter, LinkedIn, or a blog? And then it creates the post and creates an image prompt. So based on the post, that's gonna influence the image prompt, right? What did we write about? That's what we want the image to look like. From there, we send the prompt to OpenAI, which creates the image. We convert that to binary so we can actually work with the data. And then it will post on whatever platform we care about. In this case, LinkedIn, up here is Twitter. And we'll also go into why we have this upload media thing here. Um, long story short, Twitter recently like really screwed with their API when it comes to NNN, so you have to do this. And we also email it to ourselves. Down here, we have the blog version and you could hook this up to something like WordPress so it's automatically posted. But in this case, we just have it for email. That's something you'd edit on your own later. Lastly, why do we have three of these and not just one that does a one post and one image? Well, each of these has a prompt that's tweaked to the specific platform. Like stuff for Twitter becomes rather obvious, right? We want it to be under 280 characters. And then we kind of have different tones when it comes to LinkedIn versus blogs. And the image prompt also reflect those changes. And as a real quick plug, before we actually dive into this automation, if you want the template and if you want more deep dives into different sort of lessons, I suggest you check out the school. I have a link to my community in my profile where you can get templates for all sorts of AI agents. All the guides are built with a non-coder mind. So you're kind of given a step-by-step -step guide of how to get into the space. So if that's something you're interested, if you're looking for the particular templates, go ahead and check us out. Okay, so let's get started and go through this automation module by module. So the first thing you see here is a form submission. So here's what the form looks like. Fill out your email, the platform, the topic. And then I have some drop downs when it comes to image type and then visual style. Now, in my example, I said, hey, I was looking for like a blog of how LLMs would work. You know, entrepreneurs, infographics, Studio Ghibli. You can kind of fill out whatever you want here. And ultimately it doesn't need to be a form submission. You could have this just be like a Telegram message. You could have this hooked up to an interface on a web app, whatever you want to do. You just need somewhere where data comes in and you need to feed that to a classifier that can then push it to the different platforms which have their own unique prompts. And so when we look at the text classifier here, this thing in this particular instance is complete overkill, right? Because all we're worried about right here is what category do they want to post it to? And on the form submission, they explicitly point that out, right? Like, hey, I want this to be a blog. Hey, I want this to be LinkedIn. But you might be using something different than a form submission. You might have people just typing out, you know, in plain text. 
in which case something like a text classifier will be nice because then the AI can go in there, figure out what you're talking about and intelligently decide which pathway to push it down. Of note, when it comes to what model I'm using, using 4.1 Nano, as this is the cheapest model out there, even cheaper than many, and it does the job just fine. Now, once we tell this automation what we wanna talk about, now we need to start getting into the actual prompts. Now, the first thing is going to be the text prompt, right? What are we actually writing about? In this case, let's look at the blog. So when we look at the blog post with the user message, what we're pushing to them is the topic and the target audience, right? What are we talking about and who needs to know about it? And then from there, we have a system message. It's pretty in depth, but this is where you're really gonna make your money, right? So for all these automations, they're pretty generalized. So you can go there and really shift the scope. So it's all about what you wanna talk about. So when you're looking at this template, make sure you go in here and you edit it as you see fit. And so you'll also notice we have this hooked up to Tavly. So what happens is we give it the prompt, right? I wanna talk about AI entrepreneurs. It goes into the blog post and it's gonna call on Tavly to actually do some research to find some information about AI and entrepreneurs, right? It's not just gonna be going off its training data, it's actually gonna be searching on the live internet over the last seven days to figure out, hey, what's relevant about this topic? And then it's gonna write about it. And so if you've never used Tavly before, it's a really awesome tool. Think of it kind of like perplexity. It's kind of like a web scraper type deal. Super easy to use their API. So if you've never done it before, you're gonna to go to tavly.com. You're just gonna sign up and then right away, you're gonna see this image and you have an API key, right? So you just click right here and it's gonna copy it. You get a thousand credits for free every single month. So you can really play around with this thing. And don't be afraid to go over here to the left in the API playground and kind of take a look and mess around with all these different parameters and see what works for you, right? This is where you can actually test different settings inside Tavly to see what the responses will look like in real time. And so if we look at the actual Tavly tool, you'll see all this down here in the JSON payload, right? Right now we're looking at stuff within the last seven days. We only care about one result, but feel free to go inside of here. And again, play around with it and see what works for you. So we've told this automation what we wanna write about, who we're writing to. It's now done some research on the internet via Tavily. It's created a blog post. And now we get to the cool part where it's actually gonna create an image for us. Now, when we click on this, we'll see some of the information that we're feeding it in the user prompt, right? So what is it getting? Well, first of all, it's going to get a copy of the entire blog post so it has full context of what we're talking about. And then the next thing we're gonna give it is the image type and the visual style. So if we go down here, we'll see, hey, image type, we want it to be an info infographic, and then visual style is Studio Ghibli, right? And this could be anything you want it to be. So now that it knows what we're talking about and what sort of image we're trying to create, it's then going to cross-reference that with the system message. And again, Similar to the blog post, you need to come in here and really make edits so you're getting a final product that you want. This obviously is very exhaustive and you might be like, this is you know completely good. And oftentimes it is, but really don't be afraid to come in here and get your hands dirty and just play around with it and see what kind of different products you get from it. Now, big things that I'll point to here is some of the text element spacing stuff. One thing you're going to find when you use this a whole lot is one error that the open AI model isn't the best at is like making sure it doesn't cut off text, right? Oftentimes it will have a title and like the top 10% of the title will be cut off. So there's a lot of verbiage here inside the system prompt that speaks to like, hey, don't cut off the title, make sure there's enough margin, et cetera. So again, don't be afraid to come in here and mess around with this. And you'll see here when we test the step, what sort of output we get right? Detailed infographic, include illustrations of a neural network, et cetera, et cetera. Layout should be dynamic and engaging. Now from here, we then generate the image. You'll notice we have to use an HTTP request for this because there is no native NADN module for generating images with that API just yet. So your HTTP request is going to look just like this, right? It's going to be post. It's going to be the V1 images generation. You're actually going to have to manually go in there and do authorization bearer, and then down here are some different parameters. Now, there's a lot of ways you can play with this, right? How do you know what your options are? Well, we're going to go to the documentation, and I have a link for that down below. So here's what the documentation looks like. Again, if you're non-technical, this is going to seem very, very scary, but I promise you it's not too bad for two reasons. One, you can take all this, copy paste it, put it into the chat GPT, and ask it to explain it to you very, very slowly, and that will kind of help you, help you out. But really, if you look at this, 
you'll start to understand that like all you see here, uh, kind of zooming in too far, is we're just setting up, you know, different parameters. That's all it is. So if I go back to NADN, we'll see here, like here's one parameter, moderation low. How did I know what my options are? Well, I scroll down here and you'll see something like moderation, right? Moderation, it defaults to auto and I can put it to low if I want. So I know what my options are. In this case, it's low or auto. And if I don't do anything, I know it's just gonna to default to auto. Same thing with, you know, something like the quality, right? This is a big one. Quality of the image, because this relates to price and we definitely care about price, right? So for quality, if we don't specify it, it's gonna to default to high. But we have the options for high, medium, low, and the prices vary greatly. And what do the prices look like? What does the quality look like? Let me show you. So here is a breakdown of high, medium, and low images. And first thing I wanna call out is the low is pretty good compared to the high. The differences in quality are actually kind of subtle, right? If we look at it, like what are the huge differences that we see here? Well, I would argue that the biggest things is kind of like the water ripples, right? But in terms of like the quality of the image, it's, that's the high. And we go into the low and the low is pretty good too. Like we have reflection inside on its eye. Like it does a pretty good job, but let's also take a look at the cost. So every time you run a high image, it's going to be roughly in that 17 cents range, medium, seven cents, low, two cents. Now that isn't hard and fast. That's going to vary based on the size of the image. And you'll notice here, size is also a parameter you can play with. And there's a number of parameters that kind of go into this cost thing. But the biggest factor is going to be the quality. So just have that in the back of your mind. It's gonna cost me somewhere between 15 and 20 cents to create a high quality image. Now that we're on the topic of APIs, let's also talk about one other thing you have to do here that's different from normal OpenAI APIs. You need to actually verify your organization. Again, I'll have a link to this in the school, but you're gonna to go to this page, organizational settings, and right here it says organization verified. You're gonna to have to go in there and verify yourself. It takes two to three minutes. You're literally just taking a picture of your photo ID and confirming that you are who you are. I also provided links to more documentation because there actually is a ton that OpenAI has written about this new model, right? So I think it's worth actually going through it and kind of saying what they think is important, right? What your parameters are, what you can do, what you can't do, right? So this is all important when you really, really want a specific type of image and you're just not getting what you want. I'm telling you, take the time, go through the documentation and understand kind of what's going on under the hood here. So you verified it, you got your API, you set up the HTTP request. Now what do we care about here is gonna be the prompt, right? So we're mapping that JSON output value from the previous module. Remember that previous module is the one that makes the prompt for the image. And you'll notice here on the back side of the blog one, I added the image should be widescreen and slightly zoomed out so the entire image can be viewed. Why did I put that? Well, I noticed that I tended to have a better time of it in terms of not having text cut off when I did that. But again, this kind of just goes back to, you need to play around with this stuff and see what prompts work from you because this is like very fluid, right? It's not, this is how this always works every single time. You need to go in there and just kind of see what works best. Right, once you test that step, it'll take about 45 to 60 seconds for it to complete. And it's gonna give you a ton of data. It's gonna say something like display the data. Don't even bother. It's literally a billion lines of text. So just ignore that part. But what we do need to do is we need to convert that to binary so we can actually use it, right? So that's what this module is doing. And when you test this step, it's then gonna give you something that you can actually view. So here's the image we got, and I'm glad it kind of came out with so you can understand what the limitations are with this, right? Biggest thing is this text being cut off, right? You see it on the left, you see it on the right. However, we do have it up here up top, but the rest of the image does look pretty good. But how can we solve this text being cut off? Well, we're gonna have to go back into this prompt and probably add some more explicit language about having the margins on the left and the right also not being cut off. Because to be honest, in this just a message, it's explicit about the header and the footer, but the left and right don't really call it out. So so understand that this is one of the landmines in this automation that you're gonna to have to kind of navigate around. So once you get the picture you want, what's next? Well, super easy. You're just gonna come in here and map the appropriate things, right? The email we're gonna map from way back here on the form submission, right? The, the text is gonna come from the blog post text. 
And then you're just gonna have an attachment and you're just gonna call it data. Now, as an aside, if you're still in the process of like, hey, I kinda am working on the prompt, like eight out of seven out of 10 times to get the image I really want, how can I like make sure that this doesn't just get sent off and posted before I'm like, give it the full thumbs up? Come in here and add some sort of like human in the loop module. So you can be there and give it the thumbs up, give it the okay, say I need to check this image before you actually have it post to your socials. And I think that's a really good to mitigate the risk of this particular automation. And so that's the flow of it guys, right? You put in a form, you decide what I wanna talk about and what I want the image to look like. It then sends that off to a blog post, which does research on your behalf to create a post. It then creates an image prompt based on that post, sends the prompt to OpenAI, it creates the image, and then we consolidate it to post it. Now with the LinkedIn and Twitter sections, the only difference is gonna be what's going on in the back end right here, right? With LinkedIn, you're simply gonna to have to like actually go in there, connect your account, and fill out some of the modules as appropriate, but media category will just be image, binary field will be data, and obviously you're gonna map the particular text there. Now, the one that is tricky are the Twitter, are the X post, right? Because there is no NADN module that actually allows us to go in there and attach something. You can't attach media with NADN, and this is something that only happened a few weeks ago. Now, why did they do that? Couldn't tell you, but I'll show you the fix. So I didn't come up with this fix, Ahmed came up with this fix and I have a link on my template where he explains how to do it. So it's kind of annoying. You essentially have to create a new um, credential with Twitter. So I would, you know, create the module. I would go up to create new account, right? And I need to go and get my client ID first. So open the docs, go through the steps of creating the Twitter, you know, developer account, creating the app, right? Go through all of this. And so once you do that, you input your client ID and you input your client secret. Here's what you have to do. You're going to have this thing pop up, right? You're going to copy and paste this entire URL in there. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up a new tab. You're going to paste that entire URL into the tab. And at the very end of the URL, you're going to do plus media dot right. Again, he spells this out in the post. You're then going to get to this page. You're then going to be able to authorize the app. And now you can now make a new module, which can attach it, right? Pain in the butt, annoying workaround. Hopefully this isn't the case in a few weeks or whatever, but this is the only way to do it as of now. So once you do that, then you're going to make an HTTP request. And it's going to look something like this, right? The URL will be to slash media slash upload credential type will be with your new account that you did. And then here you can do form data, binary field, media, data. And this allows you to essentially like upload the media. Again, Muhammad goes through it in detail of how to do it on his post and he also provides the actual modules. Now, once you do that, then you can do a normal X module that you can create a tweet and put the media ID, media ID in there. And this is the only way that I've seen people be able to do it, like I said, annoying workaround, but you give it about five minutes and you'll be okay. But yeah, that's the automation in a nutshell. I really like this one. Like the image generation with this new chat GPT model is awesome. Like it does things with AI images that we could never do before. Although it does have its quirks, right? Like we looked at the image that we created in this demo and it had some text cut off, but by and large, having run this actually quite a few times in the last 24 hours, that was the only major issue I had. So if you know that going in and you can start to kind of like massage the prompts to avoid that, you're going to be in a really good place because this sort of like technology hasn't been out there before. We've been able to make AI images, but not with text, not on this level, not with this customizability. And I think the next step after this is being able to then create videos with this, right? Like I have another video that you've all seen where we do the faceless video stuff, you know, where we took flux images and put it in the cling, but now we have like a whole like new ball game when it comes to the base image, the most important part of creating those videos. So I think this is super cool. There's a ton of cool use cases for this. And like what I kept hammering on before, like go in here and play with the prompts, right? You need to make this as specialized as you can for your particular use case. So um, yeah, let me know what you think um, and I'll see you around.